All right, so the best way to explain volumetric efficiency is going to be to start off with a visual representation of what a factory VE table looks like. So let's open up HP Tuners, and we're going to open up our stock 5.3 liter uh, tune file. So we're going to go over to the top left and click the file folder. We're going to open up our stock 2005 GMC Sierra 5.3 liter file. Once that opens up, we're going to go to Engine, Airflow, General, and under Main VE, you've got our primary volumetric efficiency table. So I know this looks like a bunch of numbers, to people that aren't familiar with VE, it is literally just a bunch of numbers. Um, but ultimately, this is a way for GM to put in its ECM to explain how efficient the engine is at moving airflow or cylinder fill. So if our engine was capable of 100% VE, that means our cylinders are being filled 100% full of air. And if they take any more, they're going to actually become more than 100% efficient. So as we're looking through this, everything is going to be based off of RPM and manifold air, air pressure. So we've got RPM at the top and manifold air pressure on the left. So manifold air pressure is going to be based off of what our barometric pressure is. Um, depending on your elevation, your density altitude, it is going to change your manifold air pressure um, as far as what your engine can consume naturally aspirated. So I'm in Nashville, Tennessee. We live at roughly 660 foot of elevation. Um, so on a good day, 80 degree day, um, where the humidity is not crazy, we're going to see right at 100 kPa um, at um, key on, engine off, manifold air pressure. Um, at that 100 kPa, if that's what it is with key on, engine off, that is ideally what we want to see all the way across from idle to red line. Now, is that possible? Yes, in an ideal situation it is, but in these pickup trucks, it's really not. So anyway, so let's go through and see how this engine is actually going to look at this at this um, VE table. So we're going to start off at idle. So a stock camshaft is going to idle at roughly 35 to 40 kPa. Um, and also they're going to idle right around 525 RPM as we've seen in other tune files. So the engine is going to be idling somewhere around in this area. So we're going to say it's roughly 60-ish, 61% efficient at moving airflow. Now, that is being dictated by the throttle blade. Obviously, when the throttle blade is closed, it controls cylinder fill, so our cylinders are not being filled 100% with air. Now, for the guys that are going to take that literally, there is air in our cylinders that are filling up the entire area, but it is not 100% full. We are not up to our uh, maximum pressure that we can actually ingest in the engine naturally aspirated. So again, Nashville, Tennessee, wide open throttle. I'd like to see 100 kPa, so let's check out this 100 kPa line. So I click the 100, it's going to highlight it all. So basically, as we go wide open throttle on a dyno pull, the, we're going to flash the converter. So the converter, even a stock torque converter, is going to come up to like, say, 16, 1700 RPM. Um, so we're going to come from idle right here, and we're going to straight to here whenever we go wide open throttle. So if you look right there, our numbers are 85%. So what that is saying is our engine at that RPM, at that manifold air pressure, is roughly 85% full of good quality air. So as the engine revs, um, it will get better because the camshaft is allowing more air in. Um, there's a lot of, of more scientific terms that go into this. Um, there is certain ways that air mass can actually speed up and bounce off of valves um, to fill the cylinder more accurately. Um, so that's essentially what's happening. So as we're going, we've got our long runner truck intake manifold. So we're moving along at 4,000 RPM. We're at 95% efficient, which is really good. That's why these trucks have good torque in the mid range. And that's why they become truck engines is because they're very efficient with the large cylinder heads, um, the good compression, the long intake manifold runners. Um, we've got a pretty good torque engine. But you'll see that as we are going along, get to 5600 we're only 88 percent efficient now 6000 rpm we're only 83 percent efficient now why is that well that's because our camshaft is designed for low rpm really good cylinder filling for maximum torque down low so with that being said what happens when we put a camshaft in well we can check that out so the first thing i want to do is i want you to take a look at the factory um, 2d table so this is a 2d v table so if you look across this top line, this is essentially wide open throttle. And if you look, this, this shape looks a whole lot like a torque curve. Well, that's not just ironic because that's essentially what it is because torque equals airflow. So the more airflow we get in, the higher the torque we're going to get. So in the background, I'm going to put a file that I've built off of a truck Norris cammed equipped truck 
Um, now, this truck would have had a good intake, uh, long tube headers, free-flowing exhaust. So th these, this V t table shape is going to be based off of what I saw on this specific vehicle. This is not universal to all truck Norris cam trucks. Um, you're going to have dirty injectors, you know, dirty intake valves. Um, maybe you've got some high flow cats or stock cats on there. Maybe you've got a restrictive air box. Um, so anyway, so I'm going to pull this file up and I'm going to do one that actually I've, I've zeroed out the majority of the table except for wide open throttle. So that way you can see this shape. So if we look right now, we see our, the shape of our torque curve and airflow curve from the factory camshaft. And this is what it looks like with a truck Norris camshaft. So if you see how this shape, everything is shifted over to the right. So I'm going to move this so you can kind of see how it's walking over. And what that's doing is that is telling us that we have shifted our airflow over to the right. Um, so the truck's going to make more torque to the right, which obviously horsepower is calculated off of torque. So higher torque to the right means higher horsepower. All right. So with that being said, let's pull up some actual um, torque number data. Good thing is, is BTR actually shows us that for the truck Norse cam. So we're going to open up Google and I'll pull up the Brian Tooley Racing website. So to get to this, we're going to just go to their search bar and we're going to type in truck Norse. And thankfully, since Brian Tooley has actually been, they put in an in-house dyno, an engine dyno, they've been providing a lot of good data for us to, to base our camshaft selections off of. So we're going to scroll down and you're going to see this, this curve. And this curve, obviously the black line is factory, uh, made a peak of 374 horsepower. Now, some guys are going to say, well, hey, you know, an LM7 is only rated at 325. Well, this engine doesn't have accessories on there. It has a TBSS intake on it. Um, it has long tube headers and open exhaust. So if your truck had that same configuration, you could see 374 flywheel horsepower out of your bone stock LM7 5.3 liter. Um, once they equipped it with the truck Norse camshaft, you'll see that they are now up to 432 horsepower. So with that being said, we can check out the torque curves. And if you notice the shape of the torque curve is actually doing exactly what our V curve was doing. So the factory torque curve. Um, looks like peak torque is, you know, ranging between, say, 4,000 RPM to 5,100. So if we pull up our factory VE table, you will see 4,000 or so to 5,100 is where we're seeing our torque peaks. Um, so when we go over to the tuned VE table, you're going to see where our peak torque has actually shifted to like 51, 5,200. And you'll see in theirs that, actually, let me scroll down so you can see RPM. You'll see in theirs, we're right about the same. 51, 5,200 is where the peak torque is on truck Norse. So... Now you can visually see what the camshaft is doing to volumetric efficiency. Now we can take this a step further. Um, so if we want to look at actual numbers, um, I'll pull up numbers on the V tables. Now again, we've got our factory numbers. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this out and we're going to go to, I actually made a stock file that has the V number zeroed out. So that way we can just look at these very specific numbers. So this is our stock file and I'm going to go up here to compare, open compare file. And we're going to open up the other file that I made that has the truck Norse V numbers um, with everything zeroed out. So you can see how they're changing. You can look to the left and see how they're blue where they're lower and they're red where they're higher. Um, so ideally what I want to look at is I want to look at 6,000 RPM. So at 6,000 RPM, I have figured up 97% V efficiency with the truck Norse cam. Now, before some of the literal guys step in, GM in this era did not calculate VE as accurately as science would want them to. Just understand that the higher the numbers, the more air, the more fuel that we need. So anyway, so at 6,000 RPM, I've got 97% efficient. With the stock camshaft, 6,000 RPM, we've got 83% efficient. So we can actually look at the difference between those two percentages and figure up a rough power gain that we're going to have at 6,000 RPM. So what we're going to do is we're going to tools and we're going to open up our calculator. So we can actually take 97 and we're going to divide it by 83. And with that answer, you're going to see that we're roughly 16.8% more power at 6,000 RPMs with the truck Norris cam. Well, the cool part is, is now we can actually look at that same dyno graph that we were looking at earlier and see if it matches up. So we've got 432 horsepower with the camshaft, 374 with the stock camshaft. So we can take those exact numbers and do this again. So remember that 16.8 number. So I'm going to pull back up our calculator. We're going to clear it out. And we're going to say 430, what did I say, 432. 
So 432 horsepower, and we're going to divide it by 374 horsepower. And what does that equal? 15.5%. So my fuel flow numbers were showing 16.8% gains. This is showing 15.5%, so you can see how closely they tie together. So when you're going to build your VE table for a truck Norris camshaft, you can literally look at the power gains on BTR's website, factor the differences between stock torque curve and the um, truck Norris torque curve, and you could do the same thing with your VE. So if you see an area where it's 10% more power in the dyno graph, to start off as a good base, you can just add 10% in that same RPM cell. So anyways, guys, so I just wanted to explain this. Um, VE is one of those topics where we can get into, I mean, debates and discussions for months over this stuff. But again, this is a beginner's video. So I wanted just to kind of give you an idea of what these shapes look like. So again, we're gonna pull up that 2D table just to show you now that we've got the zeroed out number. So you'll see that torque curve of the factory camshaft versus that torque curve of the truck Norris camshaft. So I'll move it kind of quick and you'll see how the numbers are translating.